This is a warning to Joyce Myers. I'm going to cut to the chase, Joyce. Important message here for you, a warning for you. You are committing the unpardonable sin, my dear lady. So here it is in Matthew chapter 12. He tells us what the unpardonable sin is. The church hasn't known what it is, so they preach all kinds of nonsense, but here it is. Matthew chapter 12, Jesus in uh, verse 31, 31, Jesus said, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, period. Jesus here gives us the beautiful, simple gospel statement which the church has totally denied and rejected. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, why... Speaking against the Son of Man was when the Son of Man was there on earth talking to the Jews. Listen, the Jews did not have the gospel. So they did not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It's only for those who have had the gospel in the New Testament scriptures. The, the Old Testament, the Jews, were only an example of the church. When he's talking to the Pharisees, he's talking to the church. So there you go. Then we go, we go down to verse 36. But I say unto you, therefore, when he says this, he's saying something emphatic here, something important. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof, in the day of judgment. Here he tells us what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, what the unpardonable sin is. We speak any idle word about this short gospel statement that he made right there. Anybody who speaks against that is committing the unpardonable sin and the church has wholesale committed the unpardonable sin. If you're a preacher, a speak, uh, a teacher of a Bible study, I don't care if you're going to door to door like the Jehovah Witnesses. If you're a Mormon riding your bicycle around the world here, it's for you. You've spoken against the Holy Ghost. You've committed the unpardonable sin. And listen to what he says in verse 37. By thy words thou shalt be justified and thou shalt be condemned. Okay. Here it is. God saved the world before the foundation of the world. Okay. The test was not on the world to see if who would accept Jesus or who was chosen, as the Calvinists would tell you. This goes to the Calvinists, Arminians, Pentecostal, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventists, especially. Uh, anyone who has spoken against the gospel statement. I don't care if you're a catechism teacher, a cute little Bible study teacher there at home, you have committed the unpardonable sin, my friend, and my lady friend. So there you have it. It's not every idle word that, idle word that we speak on a daily basis. All of us speak thousands of idle words in our general walk of life. No, he's speaking especially and specifically here against the gospel statement that he made. Anybody who speaks against that is committing the unpardonable sin. Simple. He explained it there in that piece of scripture. Simple. This is why the church goes to Matthew 13, because there it really doesn't explain it. But in Matthew 12, he explains it. So, anybody who speaks against the gospel teaches. Speaketh is teaching. Speak is teaching. He's talking to the teachers. He's not talking to people there sitting in the pews that are swallowing poison by the truckload every Sunday, every Wednesday. No, 
He's speaking to the teachers. They've had their day. Church is over. Teachers. Okay. Let's go to the gospel. Simple. Simple. Just as it's simple right here in scripture, what the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, what the unpardonable sin is. I'm trying to make this clear, my friends, because you are in peril, teachers. You're in danger of being thrust out of the kingdom of God. Okay, let's go to the gospel, the good news, good news, good news for the people. Good news for me, good news for you. Good news for the murderer, the homosexual, the transvestite, the anybody. He didn't exclude anybody here other than those who speak against the gospel. That's all. There's no sin that you can commit other than the unpardonable sin. It is exactly backwards to what the, te the churches have taught. They've taught us that if you don't accept Jesus, if you haven't been chosen, you are destined for a fiery, eternal life in the pit of hell burning forever. That is utter blasphemy from the pit of hell. Listen, this life is hard enough without telling people that they're going to go to hell for eternity. And this world is in chaos. It is in utter, uh, like drunken men, the scripture tells us. The Christian church is to blame. And I will put many verses up on my website, Colossians214.com, where you can look at these verses. God foreknew that the, what the church would do here. He foreknew it. And he told us about it in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was just an example of today. In 1 Corinthians 10, he tells us that. Everything in the Old Testament is an example of today. The scriptures are real time, my friends. Real time. It's about right now. About right now. This is serious stuff that you need to heed. Who's ever watching these videos... If you haven't committed the unpardonable sin, warn your pastor, warn your teachers, warn your Bible study teachers. Now, let me clarify something here. This is why Paul said not to let the women teach. Don't, women are forbidden to teach. Speak a word. Why? I'll tell you why. He was protecting the women. He was trying to protect the women. Why? Because they're, they're the weaker vessel. Physically, obviously. And emotionally, they can be deceived easier. So he, this is why he said, I don't want the women to teach. They're, they're, in, they'll, they're liable to commit the unpardonable sin, but the church has allowed women to teach, and they're committing the unpardonable sin. Joyce Myers is committing the unpardonable sin. Kay Arthur is committing the unpardonable sin. Beth Moore is committing the unpardonable sin. Anybody who's speaking forth from the New Testament scriptures and preaching a false gospel, and you all are, I checked it. Listen. I was in the blasphemous church for 10 years. I've studied this for 30. When I saw this, I studied and studied and studied for 20 years. Now I'm going public because I'm sure and confident of what I'm sharing here. The scriptures tell us to warn the wicked. The wicked are the teachers. That's all. People who are committing the unpardonable sin, speaking forth from the New Testament scriptures. The Jews are saved. They were only an example. Muslims are saved. They're not in the New Testament scriptures. Absolutely deceived because of the Christian church. God blames the, the chaos in this world to the Christian church. Her, the harlot. And I'm just not talking about Catholics here. I'm talking about Catholicism, Protestantism, Mormonism, 
Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, all of you are committing the unpardonable sin. The gospel was simple. You have destroyed the gospel. Telling people they need to do this, that, you're committing sins, and you need to confess your sins, and on and on. Working up sin like the, you're plowing up a field, Isaiah said. Okay, let's go on to the gospel. Simple, three verses, you got the gospel. Simple. The church has absolutely destroyed the gospel. First verse, Colossians 2.14. That's the name of our website, Colossians2.14.com. Go there. We're going to post verses, scripture. We're going to let people know warning to Christian teachers on that website. The most important website on the internet. I'm not just saying that because I, I'm a part of it. No. It's what's there. The gospel is there. The warning to Christian teachers. The explanation of why this world is in such a, a mess. That was my reason for going to scripture. Why am I such a mess? Why is this world such a mess? Why? God answered for me. Took him. <laughs> Took me some time before I found it, but I found it. And 20 years after I found it, here I am. I'm just a layman. I am not I don't come from books, Christian poisoned books or any theology or any seminary or any denomination at all. This is in scripture. And I would advise you if you are looking at this, that you go to Scripture, my friends, because you may be, if you're speaking forth, if you're going door to door, like the Jehovah Witnesses are, they're committing the unpardonable sin. They don't even know it. They think they're preaching the kingdom of God. Well, they're not. Their gospel is absolutely unknown. Frightening the world, telling them the world's going to end and all this and that. Listen, the kingdom of God is coming soon, I believe. And the whole world will be in the kingdom, except preachers, teachers, and those who committed the unpardonable sin. They won't be in hell. They'll just be outside the kingdom. They had their chance here. They had the New Testament gospel, the witness, all through the New Testament. How could you miss it? When I saw this, how... Have we missed it? Well, they believed the lie, like Thessalonians said, and God's given them more lies. Okay, back to the gospel, I'm sorry. Back to the gospel. Colossians 2.14 says, blotting out. Blotting out. Strong word in scripture, blotting out, wiping out. The handwriting of ordinances. What are the handwriting of ordinances? The handwriting of ordinances is the Ten Commandments, the Law of Moses. The Law of Moses. That's what the handwriting of ordinances is. Simple, proven by other verses in Scripture. Handwriting of ordinances is the Law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. Blotting it out. He's saying right here, I wiped out the Ten Commandments that was against us, was past tense. Why? Because they're not here anymore. The law is gone. And I'll show you where in this verse. That was against us, contrary to us. It's against us, contrary to us, because in this flesh, we know that we can't obey the law. And those of you who say out there, oh, yes, I'm, I'm good. I haven't committed adultery. I haven't killed anyone. Well, if you go to the book of James, he says, if you've broken one law, you've broken them all. That puts everybody on this planet on an even keel. Adolf Hitler, myself, same thing. He didn't say except Adolf Hitler. He didn't say except Charles Manson. He didn't say except the mass murderer. No. Of course, those are not good things. But Jesus has forgiven those sins. There's only one disclaimer he made. Those who speak 
against the gospel. And the, those are the teachers in the Christian church. Those of you who are proclaiming the word of God from the New Testament scriptures. That's all. And I'm going to show you this in another set of verses that will absolutely make this clear to you. Okay. That was against us, contrary to us. That's what the law is, because in this flesh we can't obey it, but he did away with the law, blotting it out. He wiped it out. Okay. That was, and took it out of the way. Here in one verse, God wanted to be absolutely emphatic here. When he says something twice, he means, you better look at this. And the church has not looked at I never heard this, what I'm sharing with you today. I, in 10 years of being in the church, never heard this. Never. The heart of the gospel is Colossians 2.14. Along with some other verses that I'm going to share with you, but this is the heart. This tells us what Jesus Christ did at the cross to take away our sins. I often wondered, you know, the church is telling me, yeah, Jesus died and took away your sins, but you still sin and you need to confess your sins. Well, that is confusion Babylon. And that is the name of the church, Babylon. Babylon means confusion. And that's what he calls the harlot church in the book of Revelation, Babylon. Why? She has put mass confusion on the world. Mass confusion. I was confused, let me tell you, when I was in the church, I'm not confused now. What I'm sharing to you now is absolute truth from the scriptures. I've studied this for 20 years. I didn't just grab this and throw it out there. No, I studied and made sure, or God made me study and make sure that, hey, you better be right. What you're saying here, you better be right. And I am right, 100% confident. Okay. He took it out of the way, and here's what he did. Nailing it to his cross. He nailed the Ten Commandments to the cross along with himself. That's it. Done. Sin is over. His last words on the cross were, It is finished. Finished. Sin was finished. That's it. No more sin. No more sin for no one. So I ask you, why is the church telling us that we sin? When God took away our sin, nailed the law to the cross, and here, I'm going to explain this very carefully, grab on to this. Okay, in 1 John 3, 4, he clearly defines here what sin is. He says, sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. Sin is not missing the mark. We miss the mark on everything. So the church has had us, uh, not only in the Ten Commandments, but every law that's out there. If you break that law, you're sinning. If you don't pay your taxes, you're sinning. If you get a speeding ticket, you're sinning. If you don't pay the speeding ticket, you're sinning. Sin, sin, sin. Working it up. Like they plow up a field, Isaiah said. That's all. That's all the, the, the church has done, the preachers. Okay, sin is the transgression of the law. That's what scripture defines sin as. Simple. Now let's go to Romans 4.15. Simple in three verses. You got the gospel as plain as can be. There in Romans 4.15, by the Apostle Paul, he says, the law, the Ten Commandments, the law, works wrath. How does it work wrath? It works wrath on man's conscience and makes man crazy. This is why this world is crazy. The law works wrath where there is no law, there is no sin. Right these three verses down, my friends. Colossians 2.14 1 John 3.4 and Romans 4.15 in the King James. Throw those other versions in the trash. Please. 
because those versions tell you that you, if you practice sin. Well, how much sin can I practice? Before I fall off the cliff into hell. That is Babylon confusion. That's what it is. Utter confusion. Well, how much sin can I practice? What do you mean practice sin? You know, that's, that's, listen, the scriptures are black and white. Sin or no sin. If you want to stick with sin and practice sin, go ahead. Even if you haven't committed the unpardonable sin, you are in a absolute state of confusion is what you're in. This is why Christians don't know whether they're saved or not. Or one day they are, the next day they're not. Or if I do this, uh, am I saved? Or you could lose your salvation, uh, some teach, and uh, uh, you were never saved anyways. Uh, you need to ba be baptized to be saved. And on and on the nonsense goes. I'm clearing up the nonsense. Listen, church is over. Your little water baptisms and all the nonsense that you're doing in the church is over. No need. There was never any need for it. Peter told us that. It was only a figure. Till we had the New Testament scriptures, it was only a figure, right? People in those days could identify with having their minds cleansed. It was meaning the washing of the water of the Word of God. But you, Christian church, have destroyed the word of God. You have destroyed the gospel. The good news that was given to us to give to the world, to tell the world there are no more sins. God's not punishing anyone. That was the good news that the church was to preach. Their message is not good news. Listen, if you don't accept Jesus, you're going to hell. If you don't do this, you're going to hell. If you don't come to church and be baptized in water, you're going to hell. This is utter nonsense from the pit of hell. Listen, the whole world is saved. He saved it before the foundation of the world. The test was not on who's going to accept Jesus. No. The test was not who's going to be chosen. Nope. The test was on the teachers. I'm going to show you this in the next set of verses that I'm going to share with you that also tell you the gospel there again in the King James Version. Here's the test on the preachers. Anybody who's speaking forth the word of God from the New Testament. <coughs> Excuse me. So here it is. 1 John 3, 9. In the book of 1 John gives us the test. Paul gave us the gospel over and over and over again in the book of Romans, in the book of Galatians, in the book of Colossians, everywhere. And John gave us the test of who is a born-again believer who claims to be a born-again believer. The test was not on the world. They don't know it. They don't know that their sins have been forgiven. They've been told the opposite. You've destroyed the, the, the souls of the homosexual and anybody out there who's who didn't, couldn't handle this message. No wonder they're not in the church. I wouldn't be in the church either. I'm out. Church is over. Her sins have reached heaven. Her is the church. In the book of Revelation, come out of her, my people. Get out of the church. God's going to clean it out. Do you understand what I'm saying here? God's going to clean the church out soon. Already started, I believe. Okay. There won't be one person left in the church when this message gets out. And there are people who are seeing this. There is a preacher who saw it, who sees it. Not through my teaching, but he founded himself in Scripture. Had a church of 5,000 cleaned it out. He's out of the church, but he's got the gospel. He is in absolute freedom. Freedom. The church is in bondage. Listen, Jesus said, 
You're taking away the key of knowledge. You're not going in yourself and you're preventing others from going in. Talking about you. He wasn't talking to the Pharisees. The Pharisees didn't have the New Testament gospel. Didn't have it. Listen, they thought they were under the law because that's where God gave them the law. In the Old Testament, they thought they were under the law. That's why Paul said, I did it in ignorance. He's ignorant. The Muslims are ignorant. They'll be in the kingdom of God. The Buddhists, the New Ager, the, the atheists, the, the, the homosexual. Because they've had the wrong gospel. Or they were in the Old Testament. Okay, God is a, the test is not on them. He used them as an example. When he's talking to the Pharisees, he's talking to the leaders of the church, the pastor, the evangelist, the Bible study teacher, the catechism teacher. I don't care what you are. He's talking to you. Okay, here's the test. In 1 John 3, 9, write this verse down and go to the King James. Throw those other versions in the trash because the King James Version is very accurate in this most important statement in Scripture because the newer versions, I'm going to tell you what they say. Okay, 1 John 3, 9 in the King James Version says, Whosoever is born of God, if you claim to be born again, which I am, and if you're claiming to be born again and you say there's sin, you are not born again. You're denying and rejecting the gospel. And if you're speaking forth, you're committing the unpardonable sin. Yes. Serious, serious stuff I am speaking forth here. Okay, whosoever is born of God, who claims to be born again, doth not sin. Does not sin. Does not sin. If you understand the New Testament gospel, you understand that I don't sin, no one sins. Why? Because there's no law to sin against. Simple, simple gospel. Whosoever doth not, was born of God, doth not sin. For his seed remaineth in him. Those of us who are in the New Testament scriptures know this or should know this. We should know this. Does not sin and cannot sin. When I was in the churches looking at this verse, so frightened, I would shut the scriptures and run for the hills because I thought, hey, I sin. But this verse is telling me that I do not and cannot. How is this possible? And the church keeps on destroying the souls of the people. Does not and cannot. It's impossible to sin. Why? Simple gospel. Jesus Christ took the law away and sin is the transgression of the law. That's what scripture defines sin as. Not practice. Because how much practice can I practice? before I fall off the cliff. That is absolute Babylon confusion. Throw those versions in the trash. Because here he tells us, very plain, very clear, there's no doubt here of what he's saying. This is how you test a born-again believer. This is how I test pastors. The first thing I will ask a pastor, I, I will say, do you sin? And he'll say, yes. And I'll say, you don't know the gospel. He'll say, yes, I do. And I'll say, what do you do with 1 John 3, 9? 1 John 3, 9. Well, they'll dance around and tell me in the Greek and all, all this nonsense in the Greek. That's where they go because they don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. So they want to dazzle you with the Greek. Dazzle you with the Greek. Well, I'm not dazzled. I'm, I see it clear and plain now. Frightened in the blasphemous Christian church, in the Baptist church, or whatever it was, in Agora Hills, California, Agora Bible Fellowship. And this warning's gone out to them, too. 
and to the preacher that was preaching this. He's in another blasphemous church now in Los Altos, California. Okay, you have the gospel, you have the test, and now I'm going to share with you who's going to be in the kingdom. And there we go to Luke chapter 13. Give me one second here when I jump over there. Luke chapter 13. A disciple there asked, Oh, Jesus, are there few that be saved? Jesus tells them this. Jesus speaking here. Strive to enter in at the straight gate for many. Many are called, few are chosen. There's a similar passage in Matthew. It actually gets more detailed down to who he's talking to. There he's talking to the false prophets, those who say, Lord, Lord. And it's the same in this passage. When once the master are strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able to. When once the master of the house has risen up, and I shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, 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 open unto us, and he shall say, answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. He doesn't know you, Mr. Preacher. Then shall you begin to say, we have eaten and drunk. We've been in the seminaries. We've been taught by the best, Jesus. We've been taught by many, they'll say. Billy Graham or Moody or Martin Luther. Close. But no. There came out of the blasphemous Calvinist gospel. John Calvin, absolutely no. Didn't know the gospel. Jonathan Edwards, a devil of devils. I'm sorry. I can go down the line here, down to today. If I start naming them, I'll be here all day and all night. They've missed the gospel. They, are com they have committed the unpardonable sin. It's exactly backwards to what we think. And you'll see it in this set of verses. You, we have eaten and drunk in the presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. You've taught in our seminaries, Jesus. In the New Testament scriptures, we were in there. But he shall say, you preachers and teachers and Bible study teachers, he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Now let me explain what a worker of iniquity is. It's a preacher who's just working up sin, more, some more than others. But in the end, the test is, to Mr. Preacher, is do you sin? Is homosexuality a sin? One of your supposed great preachers there, Joel Olstein, he was asked that question on television. Had an opportunity to, there to share the gospel to the world, to Larry King. But no, he said, yes, homosexuality is a sin. Well, I'm sorry, Joel Olstein, but you're a child of the devil. I don't care how nice sermons you have or the positive teaching that you're doing. When you boil it down, you are preaching a false gospel and you are committing the unpardonable sin. You had a beautiful opportunity there before millions to tell them there is no sin. Does the homosexual commit sin? No, he does not. Why? Because there's no law to sin against. It's as simple as that. You could have quoted Larry King, these three verses, very short, and given the gospel to the world but you destroyed them instead. So Joel Olstein, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, K. Arthur, 
Joyce Myers, I don't care who you are, you're committing the unpardonable sin. And down to your catechism teacher in the Catholic Church, down to your Bible study, cute little Bible study teacher there at home. If you're preaching a false gospel from the New Testament scriptures, you're committing the unpardonable sin. God in his mercy is warning you in this period of time. I don't for whatever reason here, he's coming down, I believe, to judge the church. Not going to judge the world. They've been saved. They just haven't been told a lie. They're in a safe place. As you'll see, as I quote the next set of verses here. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, he goes on to say, and, and they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. The whole entire world will be in the kingdom of God. And the Christian teacher, blasphemer, who's committed the unpardonable sin, will be thrust out. They'll come from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. There it is. They've come to the kingdom of God from the whole world, except those he said to, I never knew you. You should have known better. I gave you the abundant witness in the New Testament scriptures. This is serious. You can throw this out, but you'll be responsible. You need to tell Joyce Meyer she's committing the unpardonable sin. If you're watching this video, you need to tell her, or you need to tell her to watch this video. Serious, serious business here, my friends. Church is over. The day of nice parking lots and, and uh, nice building programs and nice buildings and beautiful jets and uh, on and on it goes. And this goes for Benny Hinn and all that nonsense also. Church is over. He's come down to recompense her, Jeremiah says. Revelation says. Yes. She had her chance. She had her chance. This is the warning going out to the church. And believe you and me, I'm making sure the warning goes out. I'm going out, I'm making multitudes of videos for YouTube. I'm making the comments on their YouTube videos. Yes, a lot of work. A lot of work. But God's called me to this. He has absolutely called me to this. He says, warn the wicked. Or their blood's going to be on my head. So it's not going to be on my head. Nope. I've been obedient to God. Warning you. Mr. Christian Preacher, Mrs. Christian Preacher, who should have never been preaching in the first place, dear lady. Thank you.